the uh, uh, radiation control at the nuclear, uh, nuclear facilities at the JAEA. I moved to uh, NIRS from JAEA in 2012, uh, one year after the Fukushima accident. And then uh, uh, in my uh, background, so um, uh, when I started working, uh, worked at JAEA, uh, three, three years after the, my employment, so in, in actually the 2000, two, uh, 2011, uh, so the, uh, we, I experienced the uh, GCO, critical accident, and then I experienced the Fukushima nuclear power plant accident, and last year I experienced the uh, 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 internal contamination accident. It was a predominant compound at the JAEA, my previous institute. So I'd like to introduce um, all of those briefly today. So I'm very happy to be here and also uh, make a presentation of all of those. Okay, so what is ALADOS? So a uh, similar acronym is uh, to ULADOS, European Radiation Dosimetric Group. So ALADOS is so simply a radiation, Asian Radiation Dosimetric Group. And then goal is ALADOS to establish uh, a similar framework of ULADOS among the Asian countries in radiation dosimetry field. So main mission of ALADOS is enhancement, harmonization, radiation dosimetry capabilities in Asian countries, and also exchange uh, the technology and activities uh, on the radiation dosimetry in each participating country institute. And the last one is uh, unique of ALADOS, so uh, preparation of joint response radiation dosimetry service in a radionuclear accident. So the, uh, uh, now we are experiencing the Fukushima uh, accident, so the uh, uh, China and uh, also uh, Korea uh, very, very interested in uh, uh, experiencing our activity, our experiences from Fukushima uh, nuclear power accident. So here's a um, very attractive picture and um, chain of NPP. So the uh, in a East Asia, East Asia, and uh, in uh, you can see uh, we have a lot of the uh, nuclear power plant in this in these areas. So most dense nuclear power plant area in the world. So. Uh, in Japan, before the accident, uh, 50, about 50 uh, nuclear power plants operating operated, but uh, uh, now uh, most of the nuclear power plants shut down, uh, uh, stopped now. But uh, several uh, nuclear power plants re, uh, has has restarted uh, uh, in Japan. But also uh, there are the plans for uh, develop the uh, nuclear uh, new uh, nuclear power plant uh, around this uh, China and also uh, Korea. Uh, Maybe, and then uh, here the, we have a uh, potentially uh, uh, potential uh, hazard uh, related to nu uh, uh, radiation uh, nuclear power plant accident. So the member institute of ALADOS is here. Now this is a, a institute uh, participating in the last ALADOS meeting last year, and then a country uh, uh, member in country is J uh, Japan and the Republic of Korea, China and the Malaysia, and Vietnam, and then uh, many uh, we have uh, many uh, collaborators uh, participating in institute of Aladus. So our in, uh, in Japan, uh, our institute uh, QST NRS and also other uh, Japan Atomic Agency, Hirosaki and Fukushima Medical University, uh, Hiroshima University, Nagasaki University. Uh, radiation research, radiation effect research foundation in Hiroshima and Osaka Prefecture University. <coughs> now, uh, last uh, last meeting, so the Japanese uh, Physical Dosimetry Network Institute and the Biological Net, uh, Institute uh, uh, joined this uh, last meeting, and then Republic Korea and uh, so the Kiramis uh, NRE MC and also KHNP and Kairi and Kara and also uh, participating. Uh, participants from these institutes uh, 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 joined this uh, last meeting. So China, uh, CILP, China Institute of Radiation Protection, uh, National Institute of Radiation Protection, China, and uh, uh, National Institute of Technology, and Malaysia, and Vietnam. Uh, so last meeting, we have uh, uh, 30 participants, among about 30 participants joined this uh, last meeting. 
So Red Institute is a hosting institute in each country, in country and Black uh, Institute is a, a collaborating institute. So here's a picture, uh, uh, annual meeting. So first meeting uh, organized by Kilometers here, uh, 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 2015. And then second meeting is CLP in China, and last meeting uh, organized by our institute. So here's a picture of the uh, participant number uh, increasing like this. And then the first meeting uh, in 2015, uh, Dr. Uh, Hihoha here <laughs> uh, uh, proposed a documentary network among the Asian countries. Uh, all of those was born uh, through discussion in the first meeting in 2015. The time, uh, the main mission and task, all of those were discussed at the time, and then research activities each, each member institute was shared, and then uh, it was decided hosting Institute of China, uh, Korea, and Japan organized annual meeting in turn. The second meeting uh, to organize uh, by CRP 2016, the uh, body of all those was discussed, and then uh, chairperson uh, and secretary sec selected, and the research activity each member's institute was shared, and the collaborating studies are discussed and launched. So uh, next speaker, uh, Hugh Hoha, uh, uh, introduced the, uh, our, one of the, our activities, inter-collaborating uh, uh, collaborating activities. So the, the, all those bodies are very simple now that we just born, so here. Chairperson, I was uh, fortunately se uh, selected by chairperson to be Arados, and secretary is the Hihoha Kilamus. And also we have uh, several working group package, uh, internal geometry, uh, external geometry, band geometry, and computer geometry. So each participant uh, of annual meeting uh, can propose uh, uh, so projected. Uh, pro 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 proposal in each working group, and then uh, so share the uh, propose the uh, uh, project, and then uh, if uh, everybody agreed that the project, so the, we launched the project. So this is simple. So we haven't uh, contact uh, officially uh, international bodies yet, but uh, in the future uh, we'd like to uh, hopefully we'd like to uh, collaborate and and officially contact with uh, international bodies, Irados, uh, IAEA, WHO. Here, uh, uh, all of those annual meeting, this is a, sorry, the busy slide, so uh, maybe you can show the uh, uh, handout. So the, uh, this is a program, uh, last uh, Arados meeting uh, organized our institute uh, last November. The uh, three days pro, uh, uh, working shop, work, working shop, uh, workshop, and then uh, first day and uh, half of the second days are mostly uh, uh, shared the, the activities in each participant participating institute, and then so second day, so we firstly uh, discussed the uh, result of the uh, preliminary result of the uh, intercomparative exercises, side of the measurements, and also by the geometry, and then. Uh, the last day of the second day, uh, last time the second day that we discussed the future plan, and then third day the official uh, tour to Fukushima. So uh, this is a, a collaborating project, uh, ongoing pro collaboration, uh, collaborative project is now. So the uh, first one is uh, Arados Working Group 0101 is the code name. Is a, a silo monitoring intercompany exercise proposed by Hihoha Hilamus. And then uh, detail is described in the uh, next uh, presentation. And then code uh, working, working groups uh, 03001 and uh, is a chromosome analysis intercompany exercise proposed also the Hilamus uh, Johnson. And then uh, now this uh, year, uh, so uh, Ch China colleagues Koji and Kao. Uh, proposed the uh, whole body encounter comparison exercise. Now, the, uh, now uh, we are now discussing the logistics, pro logistics issue, the uh, transporting uh, uh, phantom like that. So, and also other project also planning, so the, I'd like to introduce uh, a little bit more uh, after that. So uh, potential items of whole collaborating project is here. 
So the, this is an uh, item that each uh, discussed in the last uh, last meeting. So internal dosimetry regarding internal dosimetry. So now we are discussing the potential uh, potential uh, the project uh, potential project like uh, direct measurement uh, side measurement uh, version two version one is now already uh, uh, already almost finished, and then uh, we consider the uh, use of the uh, physical phantom. Uh, Different type of the physical phantom and the voxel phantoms, and also bias say so spiked urine samples ash and actinoid and efficient product uh, is a like uh, presentation by Chen Sang, but uh, we have some uh, problems to tra some transporting radioactive nucleus <laughs> spike uh, sample, but but uh, we solve the we would like to solve these uh, issues, but it's very good important. Uh, 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 project item in the future. And also scenario-based internal dosimetry assessment. So the, uh, in Japan, also the Korea and the China, we have uh, several um, uh, actual accidents. And then some of the accidents, uh, we got a, uh, uh, the data uh, uh, was available uh, for some uh, accident. So the, uh, using this uh, actually obtained data, uh, we may uh, uh, perform the uh, internal comparison exercises on the inter internal dose assessment. And then also biokinetic model calculation. Now uh, uh, new OIR sheets by ASHRP now has been uh, published. And uh, maybe the, uh, as ARADOS, for ARADOS, we, it's also important for us to uh, uh, catch up with uh, the new, newest uh, uh, biochemical models or dosimetric systems by ICRP. And also extend dosimetry. So the uh, Korean colleagues so the uh, 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 supposed to uh, uh, ESR intercompliance exercises, uh, the, but unfortunately so in Japan, uh, similar network, uh, 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 in Japan very few uh, organization capable of the ESR, but now I try to find the uh, 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 institute in Japan uh, capable of ESR, and then uh, try to uh, uh, so they give the information to Kiram's members. And then exchanging information with medical occupational exposure, and then uh, uh, responsible to exchange the those limit on, especially the islands and each country. So the now uh, regulatory limit is uh, uh, modified in recent ICRP documents, then uh, maybe the most people uh, interested in this, uh, the uh, current status for the occupational exposure or other exposure situations uh, regarding the, the, uh, uh, I those, ren uh, those on I lens. So the, uh, maybe the, this is also good uh, uh, collaborating materials. And also uh, scenario-based external those calculation. It's a kind of the uh, simulation studies uh, I'd like to introduce uh, this one, this, part, this uh, uh, program, uh, this project uh, uh, next slide. And then bio, as bio dosimetry, so the uh, uh, intercomparison uh, of chromosome analysis version two, uh, actually that uh, this year, uh, first year, uh, first cycle, uh, so Kiramus organized the, the uh, first intercomparison exercise chromosome analysis. Then the, this uh, next stage, uh, so China uh, will uh, organize uh, intercomparison exercises, uh, uh, chromosome analysis. And then uh, comparison of the uh, calibration curve and also as a uh, micronucleus and uh, fish like that. So the, uh, from this slide, I'd like to introduce the potential items from this is uh, our suggestion for the uh, QST and IRS. So this first item is a, this is a, a one of the collaborating items. This is uh, uh, our uh, suggestion. The uh, first is uh, analy analysis of the sodium iodine, a pulse height spectra obtained uh, Fukushima nuclear power plant accident. So the after Fukushima accident, uh, we have uh, uh, several uh, uh, real, real actually ob uh, really obtained uh, uh, pulse height spectrum uh, for the sodium ion detector. Sodium ion detector is still uh, widely used for radiation imaging situations. 
So maybe the, we have to consider the, what kind of the radio, uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear library uh, established and or um, what kind of the parameters uh, to uh, cons uh, prepared to, to optimize such uh, analysis of the uh, uh, spec such a kind of complicated spectra like that. So we can share the information uh, data uh, in the cloud's activities. And also uh, sharing information on the current status of each country regarding its uh, uh, national plan for uh, radionuclide accident. So after Fukushima accident, many international, board, interna international uh, documents are uh, published and the project also uh, launched here. Uh, so the, uh, the example of the uh, uh, publication from international project and bodies. And then, so my interest is about uh, uh, what is the kind of status of the, uh, uh, each country to respond to the latest information. So the, uh, now the uh, IAE document described the new OIR 8, it uh, described it in the, in the cyber measurement. And then, and also um, IRS and colleague uh, developed the age-dependent phantoms. So actually the, we purchased this phantom and then maybe the, uh, we can use, uh, we may use uh, this phantom for um, some uh, study in uh, among the ARASC members. And also um, this is a, a another uh, potential items for uh, our institute. So the uh, developing uh, educational training material responding to uh, radionuclear accident. Uh, this is a, a scene of the uh, a training course of the cyber measurement and uh, we prepare the uh, uh, 12 mannequins, different, uh, different uh, uh, face and then uh, uh, talk on the week <laughs> to be uh, uh, to, to, to be uh, actual humans, but uh, anyway, so um, we have an um, exercise like that, so the, the, the use, uh, the device used in this exercise is uh, the TCS-171 one, TCS, uh, one uh, uh, introduced by a uh, uh, previous presentation uh, by Che san and then uh, this is uh, uh, our, uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, device mostly used for uh, 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 ambient uh, dose rate measurement. So the, uh, anyway, so the, this uh, device is uh, mostly used in Japan. And then uh, using the, this device, uh, 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 we, uh, we planned, we, we, we developed the, such a training course, and then uh, we uh, uh, demonstrated uh, some uh, kind of the OIL uh, level, and then we can we, 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 check, we check the uh, um, participant can uh, sufficiently identify the uh, contaminated subject or not. But maybe uh, such a materials uh, may be arranged by each participant country. So the, uh, maybe uh, we can share the information and to, to improve the uh, practicability and additional response. And also, uh, this is from this slide, it's a little bit complicated. So the, uh, now, uh, our colleague is very uh, talented in the uh, benchmark calculation, uh, uh, calculation by country models. So the, now, as you know, uh, some of the models uh, uh, changed to be complicated like, one, like this. So the uh, old iodine models, the uh, uh, new iodine model. So it's important to, to uh, catch up with the uh, uh, ICRP uh, new by country models. So the, uh, <coughs> now we uh, this is a preliminary re our re result for the uh, uh, biotouchment calculations. Maybe uh, it's, it's useful for uh, uh, comparison, the calculation of biochemistry models among the uh, uh, institutes, Arados Institute. And also uh, uh, intercomparison uh, scenario based uh, internal dose assessment. This actually, uh, actual accident and sorry <laughs> and then uh, this is uh, uh, actually uh, at JAEA accident J at uh, occurred JAEA so this is a uh, uh, I published this uh, uh, analysis of the uh, uh, this accident and then 
I already uh, performed the uh, dose assessment, but this accident is a uh, relative uh, so the ruthenium accident. And then we, at that time, there are uh, lung monitoring data and uh, daily feces and also urine, urine data available, three data set available. So we have to consider most uh, mm, best parameters, such as uh, uh, MAD and also type, uh, by interpreting, the, in, in, by interpreting the, the old data. And then maybe the uh, uh, data uh, obtained the oral accident last year, uh, the data is, the accident is more complicated. So the, the, the accident actually is the first accident in Japan where uh, in which uh, chelation therapy of DTPA uh, uh, used. So the, in the future, uh, I <coughs> would like to share the uh, data obtained from ORI uh, for um, item uh, of uh, others in the comparison exercises. And also, uh, here the last one, maybe, uh, the creation of the uh, voxel front of the medical image uh, direct measurements. So now also the, uh, we, we, such a, uh, we do, we, we have done uh, uh, creation, uh, uh, creation of the voxel front of, uh, from the uh, medical image of the uh, volunteer. Actually this uh, subject, uh, this study is, uh, has been conducted as a reconstruction project, our early reconstruction project of the emergency work of the Fukushima uh, nuclear power plant workers. Uh, so that we uh, ask the uh, uh, imaginary workers to, 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 to uh, obtain, to, to uh, give, uh, provide us uh, with uh, uh, medical images and then uh, we, uh, identify the uh, 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 siloed si silo region, and then and, uh, we, develop, we do the development. But uh, uh, it's difficult to, to uh, that segmentation is good or not. It depends on the uh, uh, skill of the uh, 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 creator. So maybe that it's good. Uh, it's also the uh, potential items for other uh, activities. But anyway, so uh, these are our uh, current uh, studies. But some of them may be useful for us uh, to enhance uh, activities. And also the last one, sorry, the last one is a, a case study of the external of those calculation. This is a JCO critical accident. So this is a actually that we, I experienced the uh, long, long time ago. Uh, so the, the third, third, uh, third years after uh, my working, work, working at JAA. So at that time I was new and then uh, I was uh, requested to go there and then measured neutrons. And then at that time, some experts uh, also including, uh, I also experienced the uh, such calculations. So the critical accident calculations. So the, uh, this is a building uh, of accident. And then so the JAEA experts uh, creating such a, a, a models. And then uh, so several uh, difficult, complicated uh, larger transposition calculations and then evaluated the those. Most of the uh, uh, procedure I forgot, I forgot. So I tried to uh, remember, uh, recall this, uh, my experience a long time ago, but anyway, uh, external those I, I am in charge of the, I, I, my specialty is internal dosimetry, but uh, I try to uh, promote external those uh, dosimetries. So our institute uh, has uh, uh, international collaborations, so uh, comprehensive collaboration contact between the, uh, our institute, IRS in France, and then uh, also our institute designated as IAA uh, capacity, uh, capacity Building Center, CBC, uh, last year. And maybe uh, such a similar uh, international collaboration, uh, also the has, Kiram has, and also uh, CRP has. And then, uh, so we have a, a pipe to the uh, international bodies. And then, so our institute has many experiences with internal, international training course, uh, develop uh, skills and develop, de deliver the knowledge related to relation imaging medicine. Uh, these occasions uh, would be useful for promoting our activities. So this is our ULADOS uh, homepage. 
So the, uh, in the in a, maybe it takes time, but uh, uh, in the future, uh, I'd like to, uh, we'd like to, uh, allow those to be the same uh, scale uh, network. So the, uh, uh, the Eurados has a long history, uh, we just a three years history, but uh, we uh, promote the Eurados activity as much as possible. So the, uh, I introduced uh, Eurados meeting, uh, I, I introduced the Eurados to the Eurados meeting to the uh, 2017, uh, Germany and the meeting, and then I introduce uh, this uh, picture uh, taken by <laughs> Yohan Hassan. <laughs> and then, uh, anyway, so the so I promise to the uh, uh, I, I announce the uh, establishment of Arados anyway. And then uh, now we are uh, now going on the Arados activities. And uh, this is the final slide. So the uh, concluding remark. So uh, the fa framework of Arados has been built. So next, next. So the my promoting, collaborating research activities, uh, hopefully scientific papers, I'd like to, we'd like to um, publish uh, many, many papers uh, by other members. And also inviting a new collaborating institute in Asian countries and explore uh, in new research areas and developing st a strong relationship between the member institutes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyway. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Wee Ho. I'm very happy to be here with you again. And in this talk, uh, we'll talk about uh, thyroid measurement in compression exercise that we had last year as one of the intercompression exercise of the Arados. And I'm a... Uh, I, I have served as the secretary of Arados to support the Dr. Kuriara, uh, chairperson of the Arados. Uh, I'm very happy to introduce our intercomparison exercise. Uh, I believe that uh, such kind of intercomparison exercise is very important and meaningful uh, to properly respond to radiation emergency especially for preparing for real cases of the nuclear power plant accidents. So uh, I will talk about thyroid measurement in comparison. This is my content. And first one is uh, radio iodine is a uh, representative the isotope among the fission products. Uh, including the plutonium, cesium, and the other isotopes. But uh, thyroid is a target organ of the radioiodine, like uh, iodine-129 and iodine-131. And this uh, radioiodine, as a patient product, uh, can be released into the atmosphere after a nuclear power plant accident. So in the... In early phase of the nuclear power plant accidents, the thyroid monitoring is very, very important because the, as you can, uh, as you already know, the half-life of the iodine-131 is very short. So the initial response to uh, monitor the thyroid activity is very important to work in real case of nuclear power plant accident. And the U.S. Uh, Hasbeck Society uh, reported the amount of the radioactivity uh, which were released into the environment in the, at the uh, Chernobyl accident uh, and Fukushima accident after uh, Chernobyl accidents. 
And the, as you can see, this table, uh, a lot of, a huge amount of the uh, IDAM 131 activity were released into the environment at the uh, Chernobyl accidents and Fukushima accidents. Uh, as you can see, the unit is the peptavacryl. Peptavacryl is, uh, pepta means the uh, prefix to mean the 10 to the 15th power. So it's a huge amount of the radioactivity. Anyway, it, at the Chernobyl accidents, uh, 1,800 uh, peptavacryl was released into the atmosphere. And uh, at the Fukushima accidents, the amount is uh, smaller than the Chernobyl accidents, but uh, 130 to 160 uh, peptavacryl uh, is made it to be released to the environment. And after Fukushima nuclear power plant accidents, uh, many uh, Japanese uh, institutes, including NIRS and uh, Fukushima American University and the other uh, uh, specialized institutes performed the thyroid measurements using uh, several devices like uh, sodium iodide scintillation detector or Geiger counter to measure the thyroid activity for the screening of the internal contamination uh, with the uh, iodine 131. So I want to say that uh, thyroid measurement is very, very important after nuclear power plant accidents. And in the thyroid measurement, the rapid uh, and accurate measurement of the radio iodine is also very important in terms of the internal dose assessment as well as the health risk assessment following the internal contamination of radio iodine. In general, uh, gamma spectrometers like uh, sodium iodide scintillation detector or uh, high pure germanium detector uh, can be used uh, for the thyroid measurement. And in this uh, process, we have to do the proper calibration of the thyroid uh, detector considering the counting geometry because the uh, general uh, counting efficiency of the thyroid detector is different according to the counting geometry and the type of the detector you used and the uh, volume of the source region, like a thyroid mass. So you have to need a uh, uh, have some consideration about these uh, factors uh, to affect the counting efficiency of the thyroid detector. And uh, proper calibration is very important and necessary for uh, quantification of the thyroid activity. And the quality assurance and quality control of the thyroid measurements uh, is also super important. And the ICLP and IAEA also recommends that uh, such kind of uh, radiation dosimetry laboratory should participate in the national or international intercomparison exercises to maintain the quality of the measurement system. And in general, uh, we can measure the thyroid activity like this photo. Uh, but in the calibration, we just use the uh, neck physical phantom to simulate the thyroid, human thyroid. So the pr proper calibration is very uh, important to uh, quantify the thyroid activity accurately. And I, I want to introduce the previous exercise about the thyroid measurement. Urados and uh, uh, Lawrence Livermore National Lab uh, jointly had the thyroid measurement in the comparison exercises in, in 2016. And this work was published in this year, early this year in RPD, Radiation Protection Dosimetry. And 35 facilities from 18 countries participated in this intercomparison exercise, thyroid measurement intercomparison exercise. And they used two different types of the NC neck physical phantom. NC stands for the American uh, National Standard Institute. 
they provided some uh, some standard about the neck physical phantom and the biosay performance criteria. Anyway, they used uh, two different types of the NC neck physical phantom and they used IDA 125 and IDA 131 samples as well as the blank sample not including radio iodine. And uh, this, uh, this figure shows you the participating laboratory uh, around the world, uh, especially in Asian region, uh, my institute's KIRAMS and uh, QST and IRS, uh, only two uh, institutes participated in this uh, intercomparison exercises. And this is uh, one of the results of this study. Uh, maybe this was the measured activity of the IDA-131. And they compared the measurement result from uh, reported from the participating laboratories. And they compared the measurement result uh, with the reference activity. And they analyzed the uh, relative bias and relative precision. And this is a graph of the mean relative bias. And the criterion of the re mean relative bias is from minus 25% to 50%. So as you can see, some results were paid compared to the uh, criterion on relative bias. Uh, based on the, these experience uh, to participate in intercomparison exercises, uh, in other of those, we uh, determined to uh, have a similar uh, intercomparison exercises uh, from Asian institutes, a Asian laboratories. So last year, in, in 2017, we, we have similar uh, thyroid measurement intercomparison exercises. And we used the uh, uh, IAEANC neck physical pentone like this uh, figure. This is the uh, main dimensions of the neck physical pentum to simulate the human neck, including thyroid. So this pentum uh, is only have, uh, this pentum only have one hole uh, to insert the radio iodine sample to simulate the uh, internal contamination of thyroid. And uh, QST and IRS uh, manufactured uh, this pentums uh, more than eight pentums, and they uh, distributed to the participating laboratory directly. And the participating laboratory uh, received this pentum uh, to test uh, their thyroid measurement devices. And uh, Kiram's uh, prepared uh, radio iodine samples. Uh, we bought uh, radio iodine sample, iodine 131 sample uh, with uh, certified activity, and we mixed this sample with uh, hydrochloride, uh, hydrochloride uh, solutions. Uh, and its uh, act radioactivity was above uh, minimum testing level of the iodine 131. This minimum testing level uh, is also provided from the NC uh, standards about the biosafe performance criteria. So it, uh, it was the three kilobacterial per iodine 131. So we uh, mixed uh, radio iodine uh, which activity above uh, three kilobacterial. And we uh, performed the steering uh, for one day and then we sampled the radioactivity to distribute uh, the other uh, participating laboratories. And, and then uh, we determined the reference activity. Uh, spiked activity uh, should be determined by the well, uh, well, uh, Uh, well-equipped uh, equipment. So uh, reference activity at that time uh, was determined by using high sensitivity, high purity germanium detector. For your references, uh, uh, our uh, Kiram's laboratory got uh, laboratory accreditation uh, from the Coras 
uh, Korean uh, laboratory accreditation scheme based on ISO 17025. So uh, we believe that our uh, measurement results uh, can represent the reference activity. So we used this uh, reference activity value uh, by the measurement using the uh, high purity germanium detector. And we made uh, two different bottles uh, to distribute uh, these samples to the participating laboratories and with uh, 30, milliliter, 30 milliliter and 20 milliliters. And two bottles were sent to each laboratories. Uh, these are the participating laboratories. Two laboratories from Korea and four laboratories from Japan and two laboratories from China uh, attended this uh, intercomparison exercise. Uh, I want to uh, say uh, that I really appreciate their uh, participation in this uh, intercomparison exercise. And this is the uh, photos taken uh, uh, in the Korean laboratories. They measured the uh, thyroid activity using uh, various uh, detectors that they have. And this is the photos taken in Japan. They also used a different type of the thyroid measurement devices. And this is the photo from, taken from the China. And I, I, I want to uh, tell you the intercomparison result. This is the biosafe performance criteria provided from the NC and ISO. Uh, NC and ISO provided uh, two uh, criteria about uh, mean relative bias and relative precision uh, to satisfy the uh, requirements the relative mean bias uh, have to uh, have to range from the minus 25 percent to 50 percent, and the relative bias have to be less than uh, 40 percent. And in 2011, uh, NC uh, reported new uh, criteria about the biosay performance of the radio biosay, new criterion of the uh, biosay uh, performance is the root mean squared error, considering both uh, relative bias and relative precision. So their new criterion is uh, root mean squared error have to be less uh, 25%. So to satisfy these requirements, both of them, uh, relative bias and relative precision, have to be less than 25%. So to satisfy these uh, requirements, the all, all uh, criteria, all uh, test results should be less than 25%. Uh, so this uh, criterion is more, uh, is stricter than previous uh, criteria. So we used all criteria provided from the NC uh, previous model and recent model and ISO uh, 28 to 18. This is the graph meaning the performance criteria and x axis means uh, relative bias and y axis uh, relative precision. So to satisfy the previous NC criteria and ISO 28 to 18, uh, your result should be uh, within this box, this blue box. And to satisfy new criterion about the routine scale data, your result should be, uh, should have uh, have to have to be within this red, red semicircle. So, as you can see, the criterion is more is stricter than previous model. This is the first intercompression result. Uh, compared to the reference activity, the most of results uh, show very good agreement with the reference activity, but unfortunately, poor results. Uh, were a little bit overestimated compared to the reference activity. And we analyzed the reference uh, relative bias. So uh, poor results result, uh, 
relative bias were higher than 50%, so they paired the uh, relative bias test. But however, uh, relative precision test results were uh, very nice. All of them were within 40%. Uh, so we uh, found that uh, their results uh, satisfied the criterion about uh, relative precision. And we analyzed the root mean scaled error. Uh, it's a new criterion uh, provided from the NC. And Still, poor results were paired in this test. So last year, uh, we had a meeting in uh, QSDNIRS in Japan, uh, and we had uh, time to discuss about this result. And we found that two laboratory, lab code six and seven, uh, they used a uh, different neck phantom uh, with uh, NC neck phantom that we sent them. They just used the uh, orange neck phantom instead of the NC neck phantom. So uh, after this meeting, we analyzed the uh, uh, difference of the counting efficiency of the thyroid detector between the orange neck phantom and the NC neck phantom. And we found that there was a 30% uh, difference of the counting efficiency. So these uh, caused uh, overestimation of the reported activity uh, from the lab code six and seven. So, uh, so uh, after this uh, work, we uh, corrected their result uh, using our uh, simulated uh, difference of the counting efficiency between the neck, uh, neck phantoms. And after correction of the uh, uh, result, uh, considering the uh, difference of the counting efficiency, Poll results uh, a little uh, show they, they show a little good uh, result uh, compared to previous result. Uh, we analyzed the root mean scaled error, and three results uh, satisfy the criterion about the root mean scaled error, but one result still not satisfied uh, the result. But I'm not sure the reason of this, but. Uh, but the uh, considerable thing is uh, after the correction process, the survey result satisfied the criterion about the root mean scale data. And additionally, we analyzed the type of the radiation detector and the other measurement condition of the thyroid measurements. Uh, first one is the type of the gamma detector that uh, participating laboratories used most of them used the sodium iodide, sodium iodide scintillation detector for thyroid measurements. And some of the laboratories used high purity germanium detector and sodium bromide scintillation detector. But most of them used sodium iodide scintillation detector. And they used a different size of the sodium iodide detector like this. But most of them used a two by two inch sodium iodide detec detector for thyroid measurement. But uh, as a result of this uh, comparison, we found that they used uh, different type of the detector and mm, having the different size. And we also analyzed the uh, measurement time and the distance they applied. Uh, in the measurement time, the measurement time uh, was different from laboratory to laboratory. The minimum uh, measurement time was less than one minute, but the maximum uh, measurement time was uh, higher than, greater than 10 minutes. So it takes 10 minutes to measure the thyroid activity for general population. So we have to optimize the measurement condition. Uh, and in distance from the detector to the next distance, neck, neck phantom, it's also a very important factor to determine the counting efficiency. Uh, and we found that they also applied a different uh, distance between the detector and neck phantom. Some laboratory used uh, contact geometry and some laboratories uh, distance was greater than uh, 15 centimeter. It's a little high. 
And we also analyze the relative uncertainties uh, from their measured results. And uh, we applied the coverage factor of two, which means 95% uh, uh, confidence interval. And, uh, and relative uncertainty is also different from laboratory to laboratory. So after uh, this comparison, we uh, conclude that we need uh, standardization of the measurement protocol and the uh, process of the uncertainty estimation. And I, I'd like to introduce our future plan. Uh, minimum detectable activity and minimum detectable dose is also a very important factor uh, to properly respond to radiation emergency uh, post screening of internal contamination of iodine. So uh, in the near future, we are planning to uh, compare uh, the MDA, minimum detectable activity, and minimum detectable dose. And as I mentioned before, we will do the standardization of the monitoring procedure, including the uncertainty estimation for thyroid measurement in case of radiation emergency. And uh, there are uh, several uh, calibration detector for the thyroid measurements. So determination of the neck physical phantom uh, using the uh, which is used for the thyroid measurements is also very important thing. So we need to determine the proper calibration phantom used for emergency response, considering the different size of the thyroid. Uh, Dr. Kuriara already introduced the ILSN developed age-dependent thyroid phantom. So such kind of phantom can simulate, can reflect the different size of the thyroid. <coughs> and we are planning to have the intercomparison exercise about the whole body counter, especially CIRP, China Institute for Radi Radiological Protection, they developed the Chinese BOA phantom. Chinese BOA phantom is bottom mannequin phantoms. So uh, we are planning to use this phantom for intercomparison of the whole body counter. And lastly, I want to introduce our uh, post Arados meeting. Uh, we will have a post Arados meeting in October this year. Uh, and we will have a three days program. And, and uh, this meeting will uh, be held in Kirams and uh, KHMP has research institutes together. So if you are interested in the, this kind of uh, intercomparison or uh, work about the radiation dosimetry, uh, you can contact me or Dr. Kuriara. Uh, we are welcoming all of you uh, to join our uh, joint work. And I want to uh, summary my talk here. Uh, we do the first thyroid intercomparison exercise by the internal dosimetry working group within Arados. And thyroid measurements results were compared based on the international standard like ISO and ANSI. And most of the results uh, satisfied the performance criteria after the correction process for the different, uh, different neck phantoms. And we are planning to have the continuous intercomparison exercise on the various uh, dosimetry method, including internal dosimetry and biological dosimetry and the other external or computational dosimetry. So uh, we hope to enhance our dosimetry capabilities in Asian region uh, more and more. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, does anybody have any question or comment to this talk? Okay. Why is, why is Monte Carlo question could not have the laboratory number 6A? I'm sorry, 6? Uh, six? Then the result of uh, yeah. number 6, uh, laboratory number 6A, uh, remain, uh -huh. remain not, uh, not improve. One, one, one more slide. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Number yes. 6A, the, yes. the right. Uh, uh, yes, lab code 6. 
and seven. Uh, this is the result from the lab code six and seven. And as I mentioned before, they used Odin's neck phantom, not NC neck phantom. We just distributed NC neck phantom, not Odin's neck phantom, but they applied the Odin's neck phantom for calibration of thyroid measurements. So we corrected their result using this uh, Monte Carlo uh, simulation result. And so the number six A still. Uh huh. Uh, next, next slide. Yeah. Yes. The most uh, sick A. Ah uh, no no. This is the B. Uh, no no no. The the most the right now. Yeah. Uh, six. Yes. Number six and eight. Six A. Yes. Uh huh. Ah. Uh, it, it, so yes, we corrected this uh, result mm -hmm. by using the Monte Carlo simulation result, mm -hmm. but they still uh, their result still were overestimated, but uh, uh, the amount of the overestimation a little bit smaller than uh, before. Uh -huh. But I don't know why they, their results uh, were paid uh, compared to the criterion of the Lutmiss scale data. But uh, after correction, the, their results were less overestimated. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Thank you for your presentation. I'm com I come from Jeonbuk National University in nuclear medicine. I wonder, when you prepare iodine source, yes. Uh, why do you mix with? Uh, uh, hydro hydrochloride hydro hydro instead yes. of normal cell, normal cell line. Yes. In our uh, nuclear department, yes. uh, we uh, mixed with uh, normal cell line uh -huh. uh, for uh, human or, uh, oral admi administration. Uh -huh. Why why do you mix it with uh, hydrochloride? Yeah, yeah, I think you just use the sodium chloride solution. Yeah 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 yes. yeah yeah. But. Uh, in the indirect, uh, in the direct measurement, uh, in whole body counting or thyroid monitoring, uh, when we make the calibration phantom, we just use the hydrochloride hydrochloride solution. I, 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 as far as I know, I heard that uh, this hydrochloride solution uh, can reduce the deposition of the radionuclides to the wall of the uh, bottle. So uh, in general, in the direct measurements, uh, like uh, whole body counting or thyroid measurements, I, I heard that they usually use the hydrochloride solution. Do you have any other comments? OK. Yeah. I, I, I can uh, hear your voice. Uh, yeah, as we all said, the deposition of uh, iodine to the wall, it will, remain, it will keep iodine remain in the solution. That's, that's why they use that, yeah. And, uh, and I have another question, one. Your uh, presentation number four, uh, Chernobyl versus uh, Fukushima. Yes. Yes. Uh, in the past, uh, uh, some Korean newspaper yes. uh, report uh, total radiation activity in uh, total radiation activity in uh, 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 Fukushima uh, was re released more than uh, uh, Chernobyl. I is it correct? I think it's not correct. Oh. Uh, as far as I know, the amount of the radioactivity released to the environment at the Fukushima accidents is mm -hmm. less than uh, the amount of the radioactivity at the Chernobyl accidents. So I think it's not correct. I see. Thank you. Kriana, is it right? Yeah? OK, thank you very much.
the last presentation. So I am Han Sung Kim, and I work at Kirams as a researcher in a health physics laboratory. And finally, it's the last presentation of today. So congratulations. <laughs> and I really, I would appreciate uh, if you keep concentrations uh, at the final, uh, until the last presentation. So I will start. So the title of this presentation is Recent Advances of Computational Human Phantom and its Application for Internal Dosimetry. So uh, you have different backgrounds. So I, uh, so in this presentation, I will explain what the computational phantom is and also the history of computational human phantoms. And I will. I'm going to uh, next. I will go. I'm going to focus on the state of the art phantom, which is called mesh type phantom. So construction process of mesh type phantom and the construction result of the mesh type phantom and their applications and final remarks. So here is uh, today's contents. So what is computational human phantoms? Somebody already know, but. Uh, so I put two pictures for uh, helping you uh, to guess what the computational phantom is. So computational phantom is a model of the human body and they mimic anatomical features of human body and they should be coupled with Monte Carlo code which uh, transport uh, radiations. So they should be coupled with Monte Carlo codes. And so here is the history of computational phantoms. So computational, so I will just uh, call computational human phantoms just phantoms from here, just for convenience. So the phantoms uh, have been evolved over than 50 years. So at the very beginning, we uh, the researchers used very simple geometric forms. For example, in uh, 1959, uh, ICLP used uh, a phantom, like these phantoms for internal dosimetry calculations. So at that time, each organ was represented as uh, just sphere. So all organs were uh, represented as just sphere. Uh, however, Uh, the accuracy of uh, Monte Carlo simulation or the dose assessment is really depends on how well the anatomical features uh, account for specific geometry. So at the time, most research researchers really hoped uh, improved technology. So the phantoms uh, have been uh, have evolved. Uh, step by step. So I will explain each generation of the phantoms, like stylized phantoms and voxel phantoms. So here is uh, the stylized phantoms. The alternative name of stylized phantom is mathematical phantoms. So somebody call stylized phantoms mathematical phantoms. So, so they are equal. They, they have, the phantom have two names, it's same stylized phantoms or mathematical phantoms. So as you can see, uh, it's, it's better than this just sphere. So when we combine or subtract the basic, basic figures, we can make uh, human bodies like this. So it's very simple. So right, right, right one is ORNL phantom, so it's similar. So they, they look like human being, but it's still far from a uh, realistic phantom. But they are simple, so they are easy to handle, so they don't need to that much computing power, so it's useful uh, in the past. And next, next generation is voxel phantoms. 
So it's a notable ex example of voxel phantoms. It's voxel type current ICRP reference phantoms. So if you are interested in the phantom, you can refer to ICRP publication 110, which is published in 2009. So these kind of voxel phantoms is much more realistic, anatomically much more realistic than previously used stylized or mathematical phantoms because they are based on uh, tomographic uh, image such as uh, CT image. So it's much more realistic. So the voxel phantoms, we can uh, zoom the voxel phantoms. It's like so we call these kind of box voxels. It's uh, similar to Lego block. So they have some, uh, the phantom have some voxel size or voxel resolution. So for the male phantom, uh, ICRP, uh, voxel type ICRP reference male phantom, voxel size is around two by two by eight cubic millimeter. And for the female phantom, uh, two by two by almost five uh, cubic millimeters. So especially in the Z direction is uh, large voxel size. And these voxel size uh, cause some problem or limitations. So I, I want to introduce some limitations of voxel type phantoms. Uh, so the phantoms is constructed composed of these voxels, I mean boxes, boxes. So it should be stepped surfaces. It's not smooth. Uh, it's different from real human being. So there is stepped surfaces because of the voxel resolution. And it's also difficult to represent thin or small organs or tissues. For instance, holes in hollow organs and skin and it's also difficult to define uh, micron thick uh, radio sensitive target regions. This is very thin. It's micrometer units. So it's uh, practically impossible to represent these thin uh, layers using voxel phantoms because all, uh, usually the voxel phantoms have millimeter units of voxel size. And also, voxel phantoms, uh, it's practically impossible to deform. So it's not deformable. So it's, uh, it's impossible uh, to make phantoms in uh, various postures or body shapes as well. So I will show you some limitations in detail. So this is. Uh, the skin of ICRP reference phantoms in so this slide shows the, the skin of ICRP reference phantoms in the front of view. It seems like it seems that there is no problem, but uh, we can see when we see the phantom in superior inferior view, there are some holes which cause uh, some improper dose assessment especially for weakly penetrating radiations. And also there are same limitations for hollow organs, such as stomach and urinary bladder and gall bladder. They, are, they should be uh, closed, but it's not. And also there, there are the <coughs> other limitations, more critical limitations. So as I mentioned before, so for some organs, uh, when we assess the dose, when we assess the dose, we should calculate the dose to these micron thick basal cells for especially for respiratory tract and elementary tract organs. So it's one of the example. So ET1 means uh, extra thoracic region for uh, for human respiratory tract model, so for extra ET1 region, so we should be calculate those to these 10 micrometer thick layers, but for the voxel phantoms, it's impossible, so 
inevitably we are currently using the alternative stylized phantoms for respiratory tract and alimentary tract organs. I, I just uh, put one slide for this limitation. And, and I want to move to new generation of phantoms. So before that, I will introduce uh, advantages of surface geometry, not voxel geometry. So as you can see, it's really smooth. So they are, actually there are two types of uh, surface geometry phantoms. First one is NURBS phantoms, uh, which is uh, non-uniform rational base blind surfaces, but it's, it's not important, I think. And the second one is polygon mesh phantoms. So both are smooth, both have smooth surfaces and it's possible to represent very thin structures. And also even they are deformable, so it's possible, <coughs> posture change is possible and organ shape and size we can change. And so getting this background, so in 2013, at in ICRP Committee 2 meeting, uh, these kind of limitations of voxel phantoms, these issues were brought up uh, at the meeting. So the ICRP Committee 2 decided to uh, convert current voxel type ICRP phantom into uh, polygon mesh type phantoms. So it's new generation of phantoms. So officially 2016, uh, by ICRP Committee 2, ICRP Task Group 103-103 uh, was established. So the so Task Group 103 members, so there are lots of uh, researchers involved into this project all over the world. So the aim or the purpose of this uh, task group or this project is uh, to is to convert this this current voxel type reference phantoms from ICRP publication 110 into like mesh type reference computational phantoms. That's the purpose and aim of this task group. So I will uh, uh, explain the construction method of this mesh type phantoms based on surface geometry. So for the simple organs, we, or the research team, applied uh, direct conversion method. So if the organ uh, has simple geometry like this, they just convert it to these voxel phantoms into polygon surface model, and they just handled a little bit to smooth and just increase and decrease the number of polygons, and finally adjustment of organ mass to reference value, and finally uh, can get the polygon mesh type simple organs. But however, some complicated organs, like uh, this spine model, it's, uh, it, was not imp it was not possible to uh, directly convert. So they adopt uh, high quality mesh models spine models and they fit into the voxel matter models. And for eye models, so uh, Barron's eye model of ICRP publication 119 one or 119 one I think. So detailed eye model was made and finally they made a polygon model of eye models and they installed or put into the mesh type phantom. And I forgot to uh, write reference, but this topic is also published in a, uh, as a journal article. So you can, you can look it up. And for the smell intestine, so it's also complicated because uh, as you can see like this, they, they are like, like this. So, so they randomly generate a number of small intestine models and select the best model uh, considering both geometric and dosimetric similarity with the 
original voxel models. And also, if you are interested in this, you can also refer to this article, journal article. And for the long airways, it's, it was also a uh, tough topic. So for the long airways, Taohei's method uh, was applied. So just simply inverted Y branch model uh, was applied to produce the volumetric airways with uh, sources, source and target organs. Uh, so uh, about source and target organs, I remember in the morning, Dr. Ha already explained. So I hope you, uh, you know the source and target organs. So for the long airways like this and other complex or thin organs uh, were also uh, uh, have been developed, like blood in large arteries and veins, muscle, lymphatic nodes, and target layers, and hands and feet. So here is results. Just I put just a lot of pictures. So so uh, don't ask, <laughs> I just put lots of pictures to help you understand. So this is the result of uh, male MRCP phantoms. MRCP means mesh type reference computational phantom. That's MRCP, so it's male results. Uh, as you can see, it's much more re realistic than any, gen any generation of phantoms like stylized or voxel phantoms. So this is female result. And also the advantage of the mesh type phantom, one of the advantages is the target layer of skin the thickness is 50 micrometers and the depth is uh, 50 to 100, 100 micrometers from the skin surface. Skin surface. So it's, it can be also defined. Skin and I already explained about respiratory tract organs. And depth and thickness is also micron thick thickness and airway models. For the voxel models, it cannot be uh, distinguished the airway the uh, array models, so they uh, made, uh, they applied the other uh, method to like make, to make these kind of uh, detailed array models. So when we uh, see in detail uh, for the, these, for these bronchiolar or BB regions, small BB regions, Source and target regions uh, is also was also defined were also defined. An elementary tract organ has same situation, and eyeballs were also installed into the new mesh type uh, reference phantoms, and blood in large arteries and veins. Uh, actually, it's like a labor intensive job, but it's done so for male and female, and muscle as well. And the green things, green, green stuff, are green things is lymphat lymphatic nodes. It's hard to pronounce, but it's lymphatic nodes. And so it's final result of mesh type reference computational phantoms. So, and from this, applications of uh, mesh type human phantoms. So as I mentioned before, uh, for the mesh type phantoms, uh, it's deformable, so we can uh, change the size. So the center one is the reference or standard uh, phantom, and the left one is 10th percentile phantom, and the right one is 9th percentile phantom. So applying, so I, I, I just skip the detail uh, process, like how to make, how to deform or how to uh, change the size. I just show you the result. So uh, it's possible. I, I just want to say it's possible. So different size phantoms for adult male, and the center one is reference, and for the female, it's similar. And also, uh, the one of the uh, big advantages of uh, mesh type phantoms, it's posture change, I think. 
So in this case, uh, the research team uh, used motion capture system to change their posture. So they uh, they collect the uh, position data from this uh, uh, motion capture system and they apply it to these uh, mesh type phantoms. So finally, uh, they made five different postures, uh, walking and sitting and squatting and bending and kneeling postures. Uh, of course, uh, it's possible to make uh, the different postures as well. So, and it's applications. So I'm, I'm not that profession at uh, virtual calibration or the other application, but I try to just explain like how to how to be applied. Uh, so it's I think uh, one of the uh, biggest or ah, it's just virtual calibration. So for the virtual calibrations, uh, it's really necessary to obtain the proper counting efficiency of the detector by calibration process. Uh, and uh, as as you know, a whole body counter is a facility to assess the internal contamination of exposed workers. Uh, however, although voxel phantoms are anatomically, uh, the voxel phantoms look anatomically realistic, but most voxel phantoms are made in supine position. So it's, it's not good for uh, changing the posture. But uh, for virtual calibration or like, uh, so for virtual calibrations, personalized computational phantoms, uh, it's, it's indeed essential, I think. So we can change uh, the posture and their size, so we can personalize the phantoms to to carry out virtual calibrations. And also in the radiation protection field, actually it's really fundamental uh, physical quantity. So maybe uh, nobody care how to calculate absorbed fraction or specific absorbed fraction, but uh, when we calculate specific absorbed fraction we use reference computational phantom. So uh, it can be calculated uh, as if it can be, uh, as if can be calculated using mesh type uh, reference phantoms. And as uh, Dr. Har uh, in the morning uh, explained, so we use dosimetric model and biokinetic model. And when we, when we combine, we can get organ or tissue doses. So it's really uh, a fundamental quantity, but it's it's but it's still important because it the those coefficients for internal dosimetry depends on this value. And I really I'm really not a uh, profession at nuclear medicine, but it's I heard I just uh, looked uh, a lot of journal articles, but uh, so I just show the possibility of. Uh, of the mesh type phantoms. So when we combine the good imaging system and uh, personalized uh, human phantom, we can get uh, very good results, Monte Carlo simulation results for uh, nuclear medicine as well. And also the another advantage of mesh type phantoms, we can install the detailed uh, model uh, for depending on the purpose. So if, you, if somebody uh, needs detailed trabecular bone model, they can just install the, the detailed model. But for the voxel phantoms, it's, it's practically impossible. So I, I heard uh, for the detailed breast model, it's being developed by Tsinghua University in China, and also detailed trabecular bone model is being developed by uh, University of Florida. So it's, it's one of the application and advantages uh, for patient protection. And also uh, mesh type phantoms can be used to develop or 
validate new methods to maintain or improve image quality while reducing patient doses in diagnostic imaging examinations like this. So here is conclusion or final remarks. So computational human phantoms have evolved for more than 50 or 60 years from stylized or mathematical phantoms to more advanced phantoms. And mesh type reference computational phantoms, which are based on advanced geometries in the form of polygon meshes, has been recently developed by ICRP Test Group 103. And I believe that mesh type phantoms have huge possibilities in many applications for internal or external dosimetry. And thank you. This is the last presentation. Congratulations. <laughs> Any questions? Material for the phantom huh? and the raw material for that phantom. Low material? Yeah. Sorry, I, I can't understand. Could you explain? In raw, raw material. Uh, uh -huh. What bolo, what bolo, uh, bolo what bolo the phantom made? So it's. It's made by uh, water or plastic, plastic or what? <laughs> it's it's not physical phantom. It's computational phantom. So, I see. Did you understand? Uh, I mean? just for, for for. It's computational phantom. Okay. Yeah, kind of. But I also the fox cell also, also computational. I mean, yes. Uh, yes. Ah, okay. Sorry. Thank you. So, oh. Uh, we're going to have 10 minute break before we finally uh, bring up uh, the discussion and maybe uh, catch up on your uh, questions. So could you please wait for a minute? Yeah, we're going to have 10 mi about 10 minute break. We had the 